And welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thank you as always for checking out the series. Uh, you know what to do. If you uh, like what you hear, what you see, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists. And I've got a pair of my favorite artists who are back together once again as Lump, Laura Marling, Mike Lindsay. Hello, you all. Hello. Howdy, howdy. It's great to hear from you both. Uh, I'm, I'm such big fans of what you both do, but I'm especially big fans uh, uh, of what you do together uh, now that we're hearing this, uh, this new Lump record with Animal. Uh, seriously, I mean, you guys have such interesting chemistry that plays against, I guess, your, your usual type. Um, let's just start with the, with the very basic question. Uh, did you always know that there was going to be a second record and, and what kind of put this one in motion? Uh, I'll, I'll throw that one to whoever wants it um we didn't know we by no means we 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 thought it was a one-time thing um and the reason we made a second one i mean apart from the fact that mike started working on new music which was music to my ears literally um was that we'd done shows as a live band because of course well not of course the way that we started wasn't as a band it was just as a kind of studio project and then as a live band we we felt like part of the band all of a sudden and um and then we carried on made another album yeah so mike what what for you i mean uh <laughs> just jumping in to make the music again like there's a lot of different musical emotions all over this record but there are certain points on it where i kept thinking about this uh like post cold war feel if that makes sense and I think you get that a lot of time with electronics, although it's not a given, but, uh, but there kind of is that sense to me, at least as the listener, was there anything that you found yourself gravitating towards, you know, sonically? Wow. I never really heard it being called post cold war. I like, I kind of, kind of like, um, yeah, well, I guess I, I mean, I suppose there's, yeah, there's kind of, um, analog synths and late eighties synths and, and things like that. I mean, I, I would more put it in the sort of Berlin seventies years, you know, and in, in the kind of, uh, Bowie and, and, uh, and Eno world. Um, in fact, I was trying to use some kind of, uh, instruments that would, and, and, uh, and, and machines like this guy over here, this H949 that was used in the seventies and trying to, trying to, bring a kind of collage of texture that would sort of be a bit timeless, a bit kind of now and a bit uh, twisted otherworldly, which was invented back in those days, I would say. So, um, uh, yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know what the question was now, but something about the when. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it, it sort of is interesting, this, this whole old style, but future looking at the same time. Like there's even a point where um, I, I think you all talk about it when, when it's the, the voice of Lump, uh, the, the character uh, comes in uh, and um, in, in Gamma Ray, that's it. And it was really reminiscent to me of Prince at the beginning of 1999 when that sort of same voice comes on and, you know, so I am not I will not hurt you. I, you know, I just want you to have fun. And that was so future looking at that point, you know, and as you make this music. Listen, I don't think I have a question mark at the end of this thought. That's that's the problem with this. I like but... where it's going though. <laughs> but you I like do. the idea that, that Lump's too ahead of its time. <laughs> what's wrong with Lump? Nothing is wrong with Lump. That's I think that's what I love about it because you know, while they were make while they were using these sounds, they were so looking at the future. And as you're in the future looking at the past, I mean it's this weird thing that kind of goes back and forth while you're making this music. I, I find that very interesting at least. And that's the question mark. Yeah, well, we're not even looking at the past or the future. We're looking at the parallel, you know. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, those voices of Lump that you're hearing on Gamma Ray, the uh, excuse me, I don't think we've been introduced. And then the ah, which I think is uh, Lump language for uh, the word Lump. Um, that's <laughs> happening, uh, you know, in a different time and planetary existence. You know. mm. Yeah, that's um, that that. that so what is the universe here? Do you all imagine that far as to like what what is that parallel universe? What where are we seeing? What is this world that we're experiencing? I mean, I kind of see it like the upside down in that TV program. What's that TV? Program? Stranger Things. Stranger Things, which is kind of like a um, 
you know when you find yourself I have a recurring dream about being in a car forecourt in the middle of the night in a like petrol station gas station forecourt in the middle of the night and, like the lighting's weird you know it's strange lighting and everything's slow and sludgy and you can't move fast enough that kind of thing like that like a weird dreamscape or something but um, <laughs> it sounds oh, scarier than than the, 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 the actual record is though I'll, I'll say like I, I never feel scared when I'm listening to the record sometimes uncomfortable but uh <laughs> good Okay. Yeah, I would say that. I mean, that is quite a scary, scary place. But within that place, I imagine there's, you know, some kind of uh, lump um, sort of play area. Where, yeah, uh, you, know, play. you know, so uh, it looks a little a little edgy and creepy on the outside, but um, it's actually lots of fun. A bit like Margate, where I live, actually. That's, that's um, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> there we bit, go. Bit like, Warm and fuzzy on the inside. Where we made the record, actually. So, um, you gotta have you gotta have a, a a bit of a bit of um edge and dark with the fluffy um sweetness <laughs> it's probably a tagline somewhere in this uh final article <laughs> <laughs> goes along with that uh, laura when when i hear you talk about the lyrics and and the way you get to approach this as sort of more free form than, than you might usually like um i was thinking about um something michael stipe probably peering over my shoulder uh recently said uh about a lot of his lyrics sort of being nonsense lyrics but he still wants to offer if you're looking for something that you'll find something e even in this you know as you're putting them together does that become part of it i mean uh, like i'm amazed at how poetic it can be when you know you're just sort of letting these ideas drift in but it's like at some point it does start to make sense at least to me what about to you Definitely. I mean, the whole, I mean, I'm a big fan of trying to put people off the scent of what songs are about anyway, to, to let them have their own experience of it. Um, which is sometimes a bit of a boring thing to say, but what the process of making an album in the way that we did it was, you know, just writing lyrics as, as quickly as possible and putting them to the music on the microphone as, as quickly as possible. And then you listen back to them and then you realize what you're actually saying, which is quite often, um, I mean, I think that's a very common experience, of artistic experience, whatever, but it's exactly what psychoanalysis does or, you know, different types of talk therapy, but psychoanalysis specifically l lets you say what you think you're saying, but it's, it's reinterpreted back to you as what you're actually saying, because like, we all think that we know the story of our lives and how we tell it, but actually what's really being said is in between the things you're saying. And that's what, that's what I feel when I listen back to Lump Stuff is that I sort of pretend to have this sense of control over the nonsense because it's nonsense and I'm controlling the nonsense, but really at the root of it, you can see lots of uh, strange nooks in my psyche, I'd say. Um, came here to swing dicks would be one of those moments <laughs> a very surprising moment but you know i and that's an easy one to pick out of of, of course because <laughs> of language but at the same time it's like where did that come from because you know again when we talk about playing against type i don't feel like that's a line that i would automatically expect to hear in a laura marling record a solo album no um i mean that there's a lot of dicks on this album all over it but uh there, there's something I think inherent, of course, when you're sort of using the language, a slightly unconscious language, I mean, not the not the linear language that we use to make sense of the world, but the one that's just two steps behind. That's very uh, uh, multi-gendered, I'd say, mm -hmm. or spectrally gendered. And I think I think a lot about like, I think a lot in um, of what side of my masculinity or femininity I'm presenting it in one time. Laura Marling is obviously quite straightforwardly a, f a feminine experience or a feminine mindset, but in my day-to-day -day life, I sort of, I think about p power as, you know, I don't, I'm not saying this is a statement of not of value, but just of how one thinks about things. I think it's like a powerful stance being a masculine one or the way that you walk sometimes can be more masculine or feminine, depending on what kind of mind or mood set you're in. Um, so I think about that a lot and I think like a phrase like I came here to swing dicks is funny 
because it's a funny image. It also says something about what we think about power um, as a culture, which is also funny and ludicrous. And uh, that's it. That's that's a very long answer to your question. That's a, it's, it's a great answer. But it also leads in like the way I hear you sing these lines too. like you're using different voices, which again, is something that you do uh, in, in your other work as well. But I guess it even stands out even more here, like when there's a lower range, more monotone for one song, and then there's a more falsetto. Like, like when I hear it, I start wondering is like, is this a different character being represented? You know, is, is, does it allow for those moments? In, in, I mean, as a whole, Lump feels like a different character for the, the uh, uh, different um, dramatic voice, you know, that I'm employing. But I don't know. I mean, I, I'm so responding to the music in each, in each circumstance. So something like that is a very sort of straightforward, almost piano ballad um, in the center of the album that's very different different in sentiment to something like Animal, the title track, which is almost like a 90s dance track. Um, so that it would be inappropriate to use the same voice for them both, I think. Yeah, Red Snakes, by the way, that uh, beautiful piano ballad, um, which I, I should compliment the sequencing on this album. The sequencing is, is so good, how it all just, it's perfect. And, and, and not, that's a very hard thing to do, I know, but every track hits in that right way and, and every peak and valley. And and Mike, you know, as, as we're talking about the lyrics with Laura and, and how she's reacting to the music, do you find that you get to do that as well with the music? I mean, as you're, you know, putting, you know, the final touches and, and chopping and doing whatever, do you get to make it where the music is also reacting to the lyrics in that way? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, um, you know, it, as is with the first record, it, it, start, it definitely starts with uh, Laura reacting to to what I've laid down musically. But then once that's, you know, there's been some themes that have been put into place, uh, it, each, each track starts to create its own uh, sort of arrangement that I wasn't co completely aware of whilst, whilst writing it. So you, you throw on some uh, style of voices and, 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 and we sort of layer up those, those kind of harmonies and things and suddenly choruses would pop out or, or other other moments that I didn't know were going to happen. So that that happens, and I try and um, obviously edit and work with the song after that. But the sequencing is the fun bit, I think, when you've got everything in place, all tracks together that feel like okay, this is the record. And there may have been one or two tracks that didn't make it on the album, whatever. But for me, I would take the tracks with headphones for a walk along the beach. Um, uh, and I would like take it out of the studio and, and it was kind of nice to just have your own, you know, real, real life visuals going on while, whilst you're listening to your own music. It's quite egotistical and excellent. Um, and then and then you'll realise what works and what doesn't work. And then you can come back back to the studio and, and sort of play with um, uh, kind of tales and, and, and intros and see and see how you can create those those. Um, uh, interconnected moments, which I think make the record, those in-between bits. Um, I, I think I mentioned before, but the in-between bit from from the song We Cannot Resist into um, uh, Oberon, I think it is, it's just, it, there's this one sort of 30 second section that feels just like a magical part of the record that you only get when you listen to the album, you know, it doesn't work. So yeah, it's, it's fun. You, you get, you, it the way you talk about it, it reminds me of the way, you know, people talk about when they're creating a film score and, mm. you know, and, and the callbacks that, uh, that get to happen musical, you know, like uh, taking those moments from that song and here again, it reappears later on. It, it really does feel like, I feel like a film score in that way. Well, let's make a film, you know, let's do it. I think I like that's, that's part of my questions here anyway, but it seems like that's such a natural next step for what you all are doing. Like, how much because again you so you've created this world this upside down like and 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 so far you know we have the music videos but could you see this like going beyond that beyond just music videos to whatever that means i mean maybe it's maybe it's uh you know comics and, and maybe it's a movie i mean wh where can this go i mean that's that's exactly the first time i heard the music that mike was working on it which was originally written for a short film um I thought it was so filmic that it was actually going to be hard to think of 
visuals to give it because you don't want to sort of take away from the filmicness of the how filmic the music is um and um yeah so i did a couple of music videos for this campaign and i tried to keep it as like so it makes you refocus on the music as much as possible um and yeah lump, lump should be doing comic book Maybe maybe a Marvel movie. Maybe maybe we should really aim high. Yeah. Massive <laughs> massive movies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it is you know there are these sort of themes of of uh, the upside down and kind of sci fi and, and 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 all of that. But you know, it, and Lump World is it's been a great tool for us to write with and to have as a as a character, to, uh, you know, to reflect on and, and things. But actually, there are lots of other themes that that you know kind of feel like day-to-day -day situations and and focusing on on um on uh i don't know what world issues or whatever and, and so it, it can lend itself to other imagery other than um the creepy uh sort of sludgy car park moments and things you know some so uh yeah I, I you know like like taking it for the walk along the beach you know when when you, I, you know when you have headphones on or you go for your run or your canoe or whatever you do um you you, bec you become in a sort of uh, a sort of cinematic dreamscape anyway, depending on what you're listening to. You know? So um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but it, it, I think it can lend itself to a multiple set of scenery. Especially you get a song like uh, like Paradise, which just feels epic. Like mm -hmm. I had to go back and look at the track time on that one and was surprised that it was still only, I think, like a three minute some odd second song because it felt like one of those like six, seven minute things. like. And, and and that's that's complete compliments there what you've pulled off in such a short amount of time it feels so much bigger and i guess that's why as a listener and a fan that i'm starting to go what more can i get out of this you know where where because because lump as the character sure you know maybe that's one thing but i think a lot of uh you know the greatest uh film projects or or graphic novels i mean you have that that character that it does embody so many more metaphors yeah uh yeah i've been thinking about that a lot this week actually uh yeah but i've got nothing interesting to say about it <laughs> but i do <laughs> but i have been thinking about it well at least that's something that's on the way you know <laughs> I, I i think you were talking about the the, the hedonism part of it and that, of course that's very very interesting because at one point uh, you dropped the word american before hedonism and and i i know exactly what that means but and God, we live. I live through it here in Kentucky uh, all the time. But I was curious, like, was there anything? Well, like, why was that on your mind? You know, as 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 these words were coming out. I think um, I think we live in obviously in an age of like such gluttony in a way, you know, but not physical gluttony, but kind of. Um, you know, we live in a world of fizzy hits and like passive addiction, and um, I don't know. It's all sort of depressing things to say, but like, there's underneath all of these sort of things that are controlling us on the outside. And I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, I'm close, but I'm not. Um, but you know, there's these certain scenarios and situations and technologies that keep us um, satiated and maybe slightly hypnotized, but still underneath. There's these sort of wild, untamed, libidinal interests in things that are um, that are some in some respects biological, in some respects that psychological, and they continue to you're being you sort of manipulated from the outside and manipulated from the inside all the time, and the conflict between the two is really interesting. Um, so that's why that's yeah. why I'm speaking a lot about desire. Passive okay. addiction is is really the best way of uh, like I'm not, I'm sure that's a phrase that may may have been around maybe you just invented it I don't know but it's so perfect like the the argument that I have with myself basically every time I pick up my phone you know yeah. it's it's that kind of thing like I uh, the era that we're in um, yeah. maybe that's why this is landing so hard for me this uh, this album <laughs> <laughs> do you all know how you're gonna pull this off live because uh, it sounds like it's complicated. <laughs> Um, yeah, 
uh, and it is complicated. It is complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Only because we um, saddled, or I saddled us, sorry, Laura, with some odd time signatures and, and difficult things that when you're jigsaw puzzling together, music in a studio is, is all fun and games, but when you've got to, uh, got to actually uh, do that helicopter thing, you know, um, uh, that's quite hard when it's sort of sevens and harder for you, I guess, with the, with the vocal phrasing and the, and the playing. It's, it's that thing where you're trying to desperately chase the one, you know? Um, so uh, there's bits of that, which um, we find quite, quite exciting and challenging. Um, but no, it's, it's the four piece band that we um, enjoyed putting together for the last record, which made uh, the lucky few that got to see the few shows that we did um, would have seen a transformation from the relatively ambient album to a kind of more bombastic kind of shoegaze wonder journey. Um, uh, and I'm hoping, because the first proper show, Laura, is next Thursday, actually, secret show. Um, so, uh, in fact, tomorrow we're going to figure out how we're going to do that show properly. So to be continued, but it's going to be great. Let me tell you. What was that line you just said? Sh wonder shoegazing, shoegaze wonder. So <laughs> Masters uh, of the wonder I, shoegaze. I, I, I may have said bombastic shoegaze wonder journey. That's, that's it. That's it right there. That's that's what I want on my shirt. That's my lump shirt right there. <laughs> Not that than a coffee mug, at least. <laughs> Um, I, I love it. I, I like, I just want to throw the compliments out here as a fina uh, finale. Let's sure. This is a finale. Why not? Uh, this record is so good though. What you all do is so good. I don't want to be expectant on a, on a, on a third record for a trilogy because I like how you all were still able to approach this without planning on it. But man, I so hope you guys keep doing this selfishly. I so hope you keep doing this. If we keep doing it, we're going to call the third album trilogy. Definitely. That's, <laughs> That's it. Just put the hard stuff on it. <laughs> um, first time I've got it and I'm, I'm into it. Yeah. yeah. Laura, Mike, thank you both so much uh, for continuing to work together and creating such beautiful music together. And, and, and again, I'm such fans of what you all do in your other lives as well. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you both for taking the time to talk about it. Thank you for Thanks, having us. Nice to speak to you again.